that comes with a unified church. And when we unify, that means everybody doing the same thing at the same time. We don't want to call. We all speak the same thing. We all doing the same thing at the same time. So let's go to our uh, scripture tonight, Acts chapter 12, and look at uh, the subject matter that we're going to be dealing with on tonight. So tonight we're talking about uh, the power of a unified church. Look to the person they say, neighbor, neighbor. Teamwork, teamwork will make the dream work. Listen, it's not so much your dream. It's the dream that comes from the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, Acts chapter 12, we'll start reading in verse 1 through 16. Read. Now about that time. Now about that time. Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. The Bible says that Herod the king, go back to verse 1, stretched forth his hand to vex the church. So how many know the devil was using here? And, and you have to understand that Satan, just like God, works through people. I, I was looking at this translation. This was interesting. Here is the TLB translation. It says, about that time, King Herod moved against some of the believers. Watch this. Let me help you out. This is going to help you. You can tell what spirit is at work in people and how they move. I want to serve notice on you tonight. One of the most important gifts you're going to need to have in this last hour is the spirit of discernment. And if you don't ask God to sharpen that spirit, the enemy is going to deceive you through people. It says about that time, King Herod moved against some of the believers and killed the apostle James, John's brother. So watch this. The enemy got in his mind. How does the enemy get in? He comes to our mind. Once he gets in our mind, he gets in our heart. Once the enemy gets in your heart, he gets in your behavior. And once he gets in your, your behavior, he causes you to do things that you don't even know you're doing. So one of the ways we have to keep the devil in check and keep him in his place, you got to stop allowing all this stuff to come in your mind and stay. Now everyone in here, including me, the enemy brings all type of nonsense into my mind. It's not a sin to have thoughts. It's a sin when you act upon them. So the Bible says, put the scripture back up, King James Version. Now about this time, Herod, Herod was an evil king. The king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And listen, the world hates the church. If the world like you, it's because you're not a part of the church. Let me say this again. If the world loves you, it's because you're not in the church. Because if you're really in the church, folks don't hate you. This is what Jesus said. If they hated me, they're going to hate you also. So how is it everybody like you? <laughs> All right, help me, Holy Ghost. Read. And he killed James, the brother of John. And the devil is trying to kill you. Satan has three agendas. Kill, steal, and destroy. Anytime the devil comes, he's trying to do three things. He's trying to kill you, he's trying to steal from you, and he's trying to destroy something that belongs to you. So what are you saying, Bishop Try? This is what I'm saying. You cannot afford to keep playing with the devil. You know why? Because he's playing for keeps. And he is a hit man. He knows how to knock you off. Listen, the devil knows what you like. Read. With the sword. With the sword, uh-huh. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. He was trying to knock Peter off too. But how many know the devil can't do nothing unless God allows it? 
And we're going to see as we read through this text that it wasn't Peter's time. And how many know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper? You have to know that God is going to cover you. You have to know God's going to protect you. You have to know this God's going to... Listen, I'm not dying. I'm going in the rapture. <laughs> Let me say it again. I'm talking about me. I don't know how you going. I'm going to be raptured up out of here. So I'm not going to taste natural death. So anytime the enemy comes against me, whether he coming through me, coming against my mind, whether he's trying to use circumstances, whether he's working through folks, no weapon formed against me going to prosper. You have to believe that. I don't care how wicked and how corrupt they get and how bad off people are around you. No weapon. Let me say this. I was listening to somebody and they said how a man next door neighbor killed him. This happened in St. Louis. I don't know what the full story. So, so, so that means that the enemy got in the neighbor. And evidently he must have trusted him to allow him to come in his house. What are you saying? You can't trust everybody. When you show me that you're evil and you're wicked, I'm going to deal with you a certain type of way. You know how I'm going to deal with you? I'm not. But some of us, we are gullible and we naive and we green behind the ear and don't understand that it's a spirit that's loose in the earth. All right, put that up there. Read. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Go back, read. Hold on, go back. Go back to three. Read. And, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, uh -huh. he proceeded further to take Peter also. So he was a man pleaser. And when people are always trying to please people, them folks are dangerous. When you're always trying to please people, you are a prime candidate for deception. How many know you can't please folk? I don't care what you do. You cannot please flesh. So when you're dealing with somebody that's selfish and you're doing the best you can and it's still not good enough, stop. I'm trying to show y'all how to deal with people. And you ain't got to be mean. You can still be nice and sweet. But when, when, when I see you a certain type of way, you got a certain spirit, I'm going to deal with you a certain way. I'm not going to be mean towards you. I'm going to be nice to you. But you ain't even know I see you. And, and, I, and I, listen, I'm not stupid. I know the difference when people are not perfect. I'm not perfect. I ain't talking about you being perfect. I'm talking about you being evil. I'm talking about when you're being deceptive and cunning and crafty and you're a manipulator. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about spirits. I know the difference when a person got flaws because I got them too. But you have to be able to discern between flaws and wickedness. And I am a people person. I know I am. I love to be around people. But I don't tolerate nonsense. You can't, I'm not going to let you get over on me. Some people just, you, you know your kids getting over. You just going right away. No, hey, hey. No, you can't do that. What you mean, mama? You trying to get over on me. I'm going to call it out. The, let me give you this light. The devil, watch this, works in the dark. When you expose him, he can no longer work. Y'all, y'all quiet. It, it could be your spouse. I don't care about that. I'm dealing with a spirit. So if it's some, if you married to somebody and the devil using them to get over on you, stop it. I don't care you my husband. I don't care you my wife. Do I see the spirit working through you? Oh, now y'all, y'all some punk. Y'all can't handle that one. Really, you helping people. Really, really, li listen, if, you, if, if, if a child been spoiled all their life, then had their way, and now they grown, they messed up, I'm telling you. And when you encounter them, what you're going to encounter is selfishness. Strong, it got to be my way. What do you mean it got to be your way? 
Ah, uh, let me let me get back to this. Let me do this. I don't want to get off my game tonight. Okay, read. These were the days of unleavened bread. These were the days of unleavened bread. Uh huh. And when he had apprehended him, when he had captured him, uh -huh. he put him in prison. So Peter was, was taken captive, and he was put in prison. Uh -huh. Read. And delivered him to four quartarians of soldiers to keep him. So this was a 12 soldiers. He was surrounded. I want you to see the, the circumstance and the situation that Peter was in. Read. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. See, watch this. Easter is a pagan holiday. Really, this should say Passover. Uh, you got to study. Ain't no Easter. That's, that's a pagan holiday. That's something that the world came up with to get more money. But it really should say Passover. Y'all see that? Read. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. He was kept in prison. He was incarcerated. And he hadn't did anything. Just serving the Lord. Read. But prayer was made without ceasing. That's the key right there. But what? Prayer. Was what? Non-stop they prayed for Peter. And the Bible tells us to pray without what? So the Bible says men are to what? Always pray and not what? So when you don't always pray, you'll find yourself fainting. What does that mean? Giving up. I'm ready to quit. But prayer will sustain you. Prayer will keep you. What is prayer? Let me give you a, 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 a simple definition. Talking to God. So I need to talk to God. Non-stop. <laughs> That's what it's saying. I need to commune with God. I need to dialogue, a dialogue with God on a regular basis. I don't have to be on my knees. I can be in my bed. I can be behind my desk. I can be in my car. I can be on the toilet. <laughs> How many pray on the toilet? <laughs> Men are to what? Always pray. <laughs> Y'all like that? All right. <laughs> <laughs> but prayer was made without what? Ceasing of the what? Who was praying? You know what the church is? The called out ones. So if you're not called out, you're not in the church. The church is not brick and mortar. The church is people. So the church is spiritual. It's not natural. This building is not the church. It's an edifice. But we are, the, those of us that's born into the family of God, those of us that have the spirit of Christ, we are the church. So who was praying for Peter? That means corporately they was praying. I said you should pray at home. They, they pray at home, thank God. But you need to come to corporate prayer too. And I'm going to show you tonight why you need to come out to corporate prayer. Because it's power that comes with a unified church. We all, everybody doing this. When we all do the same thing at the same time, it produces results. Everybody loving each other. Results. Nobody holding grudges. Results. Everybody tithing. Results. Everybody in worship. Results. So how do we get results? Everybody doing the same thing at the same time. You always got all balls. You know why? Because you ain't part of the church. Read. So prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. For him. They, so this is intercessory prayer. What is intercession prayer? Intercessory prayer is when you pray to God on the behalf of somebody else. Now watch this. Everybody's not an intercessor. But everybody should be an intercessor. Now let me let me show you the difference in a person that's a, that has the gift of intercession opposed to somebody that, that's not. A person that's an intercessor has the grace to pray for other people. When you're not an intercessor, you're always praying about you. A person that has the ministry of intercession, they don't have a problem with praying to God on the behalf of other people. People that's not grace to that. 
Your whole prayer is consumed about you. God, I need this, and I need him to look like that, and I want this type of car. You're not an intercessor. Now, now, I'm not saying that we don't pray because it's different. It's supplication prayer. It's intercessory prayer. It's all it's prayers of thanksgiving. So it's different ty- types of prayer. But I'm talking specifically for those of you that's a part of intercessory prayer. You don't have a problem with interceding for somebody else. And let me say this. If you're looking for something to do in your church and you are an intercessor, we have an intercessory team. We have an intercessory team where they come and pray for the saints, for the members, pray for the church, pray for leadership. They pray for the nation. They pray for our government. They pray for the community. A team of people come together and bond board heaven on the behalf of somebody else. We will be back after this message. Transition. So I'm sitting in my seat, and I knew I didn't have much, y'all. I didn't have really nothing. And I'm looking, and I'm like, okay. So before he asked for the seat, I'm like, let me just check my credit card to see what's on there so I can just give, because it's about your heart, right? I'm sitting in that chair over there next to Ariel. I checked my credit card. All of a sudden, while I was sitting in service waiting, my credit limit increased $1,000. While I was sitting there, $1,000 while sitting in church. So I'm like, okay, God. I'm like, now I got seed to sow. But what I'm going to sow, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, I get $50. Let me get 10%. Whatever, you know, my spirit got real noisy because it didn't really want me to hear what God wanted me to give. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, calm down, calm down. So he was like, I need, you know, those uh, who are uh, kingdom paymasters to sow $1,000. I knew he was talking to me, y'all. So I'm like, God, is that you? He said, I gave you 1000 to sow 1000 I said, okay. Okay, we'll do that. So I sold that. When Bishop Hillier said, he said, some of y'all got to go give you a turnaround before uh, Easter. I, I conceived that thing. I received it, and I conceived it. So when you conceive it, you got to prepare for that thing because something is coming. So I'm like, okay, guy. I tell y'all, he turned it around in like 24 hours right before Easter. I had a situation going on in court that was being pending for four months. God gave me the victory in 40 minutes when I went to the court. Crazy. Then... I was working two jobs, y'all. I'm working overnight and I'm working all day. So I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? It's hard for me to get here. When I am here, I'm falling asleep. So it was crazy. So I got a promotion on my second job. And I'm like, they like, what do we have to do? I wasn't bold enough to tell them this is what I need. So I took it to my father, Jesus. And I'm like, God, if they do X, Y, and Z, I'll be willing to, you know, do whatever. So um, I took it to God. They had a meeting. They was like, you know what? We're willing to double your pay. Double it. Double it. Double it. They bought me off of my other job, so I left my overnight job, making the same amount of money on one position. My God. The same amount of money in one job, right? So after that, I got approved for my own condo. Just moved in Saturday before Easter. Tell me God ain't real. Praise God. Somebody say, won't it do it? to do or you intercessor you do got some to get on the intercessor prayer team but now watch this when you get on it you don't run it <laughs> see see some of us we can't work with other folks we got to be the big chief no nah, you got the wrong spirit humble yourself find out what's expected and and, and do what the leader tell you to do you don't get on say well i think y'all need to do it like that who excuse me where you come from? That's the, that's the spirit of this age. All right. All right, read. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. He was sleeping between two soldiers. Bound with two chains. The next day, they was going to execute Peter. The Bible says he was bound by what? Two chains. He was shackled up. Uh-huh. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And so he had two soldiers on, on each side. He was chained up, and somebody was guarding the door. Somebody say circumstance. circumstance. Somebody say situation. situation. Read. And behold. And anytime we hear the word behold in a, in a sentence, that means that's, that's an announcement that something miraculous is getting ready to happen. Read. The angel of the Lord came upon him. Okay. So a supernatural 
angelic being came up on him. So the angel walked through the prison bars. He walked past the guards. And he up in Peter's face. What produced this? Prayer. You mean tell me prayer don't work? Just because you don't see it working don't mean it ain't working. How many know that prayer releases God's supernatural power on your behalf? Especially when all of us praying. One will send a thousand to flight, but two will send 10,000 demons to flight. Y'all heard what I'm saying? You don't think, you know, I, I, I don't want to get hit of myself. You know why a lot of us don't pray? Because we don't believe what we're praying. Because we don't see nothing right away or we don't see immediate results. We don't think it's working. Listen, you will turn some stuff up in a real mother spirit when you're praying. The Bible says when the wicked saint get on their knees, y'all ever read that scripture? The devil trembles. It's in Acts chapter 12, I think. When the weakest saint get on their knees, the devil tremble. So why do you think the devil fights you so hard in prayer? Because he knows that that's one of our most powerful weapons is prayer. Especially when you pray in the tongues. Ooh, the devil can't even interpret what you're saying. Glory to God. Watch this, read. And the light shined in the prison. And the what? You know what the light is? The glory. <laughs> the glory came in. So it sounds like to me God moving. Sound like to me God is working. You know why he's working? You know why he's moving? Because the saints are praying. Read. And he smote Peter on the side. He said, Peter, Peter was asleep. So the angel touched him. Read. And raised him up. And say, Peter, he helped him up. Look at this. This is happening supernaturally. Yeah. It's not naturally. It's supernatural. Read. Saying, Peter. Saying, Peter. Arise quickly. Get up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. What caused the chains to fall off? Prayer. Prayer. The power of God. I'm telling you, when we pray and when we bombard heaven, when we intercede, supernatural things start happening. Read. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. How many no angels will talk to you? Get yourself together, Peter. And Read. And bind on thy sandals. Put on your shoes. And so he did. Uh huh. And he said unto him, He, he didn't. He say, Why didn't he do that? No. For all y'all always got to know why. Put your shoes on. Wash your face. Brush your teeth. Calm your head. Come on, y'all talk back to me. <laughs> Because you know why somebody say why? Because you're going somewhere. All right. You're going somewhere. But you have to believe and you have to know despite of what's going on in your life at this moment. How many know it's not going to always be like this? How many know that this too shall pass? You have to encourage yourself in the Lord. I don't care where you at right now in life. God has a bright future in store for you. But you have to believe that. Read. And so Peter did. And he did. Uh -huh. And he saith unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. This is the angel leading him. Read. And he went out. He and went out. And followed him. Uh-huh. And wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel. He didn't. He, he had to pinch himself. <laughs> And I'm telling you, sometimes something there, God can do some things in your life. You don't even know how he did it. You just look back and say, how did I get out of that? How did that happen? I'm telling you, I didn't say some stuff. I can't even tell folks. There, I've experienced some things in my walk with God. Well, I can't even repeat it. Because it don't make sense. And I look like a fool's head. Because <laughs> it was what? Supernatural. Read. But thought he saw a vision. Uh-huh. He thought he saw a vision. Mm -hmm. Read. When they were past the first and the second word, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. Now notice, it was the iron gate that leadeth to the city. Uh-huh. Which opened to them of his own accord. So watch this. When they walked up to it, it opened. Say, walk up to it. Walk up to it. 
and then it'll open. <laughs> but you sitting back, listen, your mind will play tricks on you. I, I heard this story some years ago about an elephant, how they would take a rope and tie it to the elephant's leg and tie it to a post, and when he tried to move, he only go so far. He only went so far. So he had went through that so much in his mind, when they cut him loose, he wouldn't move because he thought he was still chained to the rope. And, and that's how it is with us sometimes. You've been going through so long, so long, when it's time to come out, you just like, you don't even have to come out. Because you have trained your mind to think it's going to always be like this. Somebody says it's a mind thing. Read. And then they went out. And then they what? Yeah. Went out. Uh huh. And passed on through one street. They passed on through one street. Uh huh. And forthwith the angel departed from him. And once Peter got out, the angel left. He went about his business. But he brought Peter out. What 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 triggered this miracle? What caused this thing to come? Uh, what what caused this miracle to to uh get into motion? Prayer. We got to pray. And not only do we have to pray, we have to believe what we pray. Let me, let, me, let me pause for a minute. What is the correct way to pray? Let me tell you. When you pray in line with the word. That's why you have to know the word. How do you know when I'm praying in the will of God? How do I know when I'm praying in line with God when you're praying according to the scriptures? This is my prayer. Have you ever heard me pray? This is what I say. Lord, you say it. The Bible says, bring him in what? Remembrance of his word. word. So when I pray, I try to pray in line with the scripture. Lord, you said you would give me houses. You said you would give me houses I didn't build. I didn't say it. You said it. You said I'm the head and not the tail. You said I'm healed. So that's the correct way to pray. Now, I'm not saying that you have to always use scriptures because you can pray. We invite you to join the War Crumbs Partnership. Together we can impact the world, accomplishing amazing things for the kingdom of God. By supporting this ministry, it helps clothe, feed, and minister in so much more around the globe, breaking the back of life. As this ministry continues to grow, may your life also produce food that shall last. As a No More Crumbs Partner, we will lead around the globe creating change. Because your days of having crumbs Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If ever in the St. Louis area, please come visit our North Campus, located 7200 West Florissant, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136. Or give us a call. We would love to hear from you at 314-659-8522. For more information on how to get connected, write to us or visit us online at anthonytrice.org. And we thank you for your connection.